Appeal number is uh, 15-229, Mansfield Home Value and Family Protection Act. We have a young lady coming up. Um, I am here in support and I just wanted to make a public comment saying that as residents we would appreciate you passing this Home Protection Act. Um, my job, uh, first of all, is to be a parent and to take care of my family, but my second job is as a biologist working for a special project uh, of the Environmental Defense Fund. I have given you guys handouts on um, uh, the natural gas. Just to kind of explain a little bit about the chemicals that we are exposed to in any sort of drilling and or dumping and um, just to try and help you to understand how important it is that this is passed to protect our um, citizens. You know, we, we look at all of the economic impacts if something like this comes in and, and messes with our home values. But to also take a moment and talk about the health impact that each of our citizens will be exposed to, regardless if they are in a specifically zoned for residential area or if they live in one of the apartments in the buildings downtown. Because these chemicals that are off gas are um, microparticles, they go so much further than we can ever really fully comprehend. Um, I, I have seen a lot of the data and I've seen a lot of videos showing um, them in the air and it's really quite terrifying. So, that being said, I um, would really like to encourage you guys to consider making Richland County, Mansfield, a very unappealing um, location for the oil and gas industry to set up. Thank you. Any other public comments? Dave Ramey, uh, as a local citizen, this is more procedural than anything else, and that is that I believe this was sent back to the committee for further consideration uh, as to possibly expanding the comprehension of this piece of legislation. I'm not, opposed, I'm not opposed to the concept. I know that some people may believe that, and I appreciate what the woman just said, uh, that we have to protect our interests in in an urban area for such industries or consideration of such industries. This piece of legislation is not comprehensive enough. Right? And it was sent back to committee for that reason to explore making it more comprehensive. It hasn't been done. I don't believe that there's been any motion by anyone to expand the legislation to include the Central Business District, the Lexington Avenue corridors, the Park Avenue corridors, and I know there's been discussion about that's going to be a separate piece of legislation, or should could be. I don't see it as that being necessary. I believe it can be dealt with in one piece of legislation and should be dealt with in one piece of legislation. Again, to my knowledge, there's been nothing brought to you as a committee to expand this legislation beyond the way it was originally written. And I believe that was the mission that was put forth, hasn't been done. I'll simply say. Any other public comment? <clears throat> Colleagues, anything else? I just believe he's got a good comment. You know, that it should be further considered. And that it was supposed to be and it wasn't. May I respond to the general perception of what's being stated? I'd like to ask Mr. Hill, if, uh, if this uh, 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 same protection was given to all the other uh, residentially zoned uh, areas, will you vote for it? Yes. Now, the next question I have, generally speaking, is... Are you trying to be a little more tonight? No, I'm trying to make you stay public. This is not a debate. What, what are we 
sides of the property and we only have one fire engine, we don't wait until we can buy the other two fire engines before we start fighting the fire. As I indicated before, we need immediate protection for the resident residentially zoned areas. Those folks, when they moved into an area that was exclusively residentially zoned, relied upon the protection of the city saying that the tranquility and the protection of the residentially zoned area would be protected. All other people that may live in a mixed business area don't have that same expectation. That's why I think, as I indicated before, that this legislation should move forward. This council has a duty to provide immediate protection to as many citizens as it can. It, it it's not, uh, doesn't make sense to say, well, we're not going to provide anybody protection unless we can provide everybody protection. I've already indicated that I'm working on additional legislation that will provide a, a similar protection to other neighborhoods because it's much more complex litigation, much more complex in terms of drafting. And uh, all that I can say is that the uh, citizens of our community voted for the Bill of Rights. That imposed a mandatory duty, not on uh, the present city council, but on all future councils. Uh, it imposed a mandatory duty upon not just myself, but the future law directors uh, that would be elected. So again, all I can do is say that uh, as the duly elected law director, who has researched all the cases across the country, he's probably far more knowledgeable on this issue than I think any member of council, that I'm saying that this immediate protection is something we have a duty to provide. In addition to that, we're going to move forward and adopt additional legislation to provide, in a more complex setting, whatever protection we can for those <coughs> mixed of business and residential uh, areas. And again, this is only providing the right of a citizen to sue in the event that their property value is impacted. I mean, I cannot imagine why there would be any hesitation to do that. And uh, all I can say is that uh, I presented it to City Council, and uh, uh, it's up to the City Council to vote, and then the public can judge for themselves uh, who's fighting to protect them or not. Thank you. Any other comments from <coughs> comments? Mr. Chairman, uh, in consideration of the comments made tonight and over the past few weeks, I. I I'd like to make a motion that we move this bill out of committee for full council vote. Our full council consideration and vote. Mr. Chairman, I don't know how many readings I had, but there's no reason why I can't have three readings at once it's met. We're on the second reading, right? Do we need second yes. reading if we bring it up? We have not done a second reading. We have not done a second reading. We need to do a second reading. We've had two committee meetings about it. That would be the motion I would make for the second reading. Yeah. Are we on the second reading? It's already right. been brought to council. It won't be the second reading. Okay. Right. Right. Back to committee. Right. I mean, it's up to them. So we, if we move it out of committee, it goes to the second reading? Right. It's up to you guys. Yeah. I know. <coughs> <coughs> well, he would make the motion. motion. Right. Well, again, what state your motion? Uh, I make a motion that we move this bill out of committee for to have the second reading for council. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Two or three, we move it to second reading. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Second reading, no votes. Well, it's the second. Once it comes before committee, it's over for any motion at that point in time by any member of council. Once it comes to council, yeah. Once it comes to council, I'll pass it. Yes. So, uh, as I understand it, the motion is to have a second reading before bring it out of committee for a second reading, then at that point in time, any council member can, if they so wish, can also raise a motion to have a voting upon at that point in time. That is correct. Okay. Okay. That 
so motion, 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 and that was the motion. Motion carry. Two to three, not two. Okay. okay, so it's. Mr. Chairman, I agree. It can come out. Okay, so three, three all will come out. Second committee goes second. Three, three up. Yes. Hearing no further comments. And Mr. Motion. Chairman, I just want to say thank you for moving this out of committee. Uh, the citizens of Manson would definitely appreciate it. Hearing no further comments. Close this zoning committee meeting. All in favor? Yes. Sorry. Oh, okay. Good evening. My name is Bill Baker. I live at. And I just uh, I came in. I'm, I'm pleased to see that that uh, bill moved out of committee. Thank you. But I really, I told Amy, I just want to thank everyone. I think, guess there's some elections going on today, and some of these seats may be switched. Um, but I really appreciate working with everyone, and in particular, you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you came out through the first pitch at the ball field. You've been involved many, many times when I've asked you to come and support uh, community events that, that I've worked on or I've been involved with. Uh, most recently, the teaching garden. You know, what a great uh, success. Uh, we've had there this year, uh, Mr. Spahn, and the work you've done on legislation, uh, our president, and Amy, and all of you, really. Um, you do a heck of a job for the city, and I just want you to know that it is greatly appreciated. Maybe I'm making amends from the last time I spoke here, and my letter <laughs> to the editor that was in Sunday's paper, um, but that's okay. We all need to be held accountable, myself as well, and I just wanted to say thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Bill. Okay, I have no other public comments. With that, Mayor, you have anything for caucus? I do not, sir. Director Cruciatus. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Director Spahn. No, I do not. Okay. Then we will proceed with legislation, and for caucus, we will start at 15 245. Caucus is 15 245. So we will start council with Bill 15-229, Mr. Lawrence. This will be a second read. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that Bill 15-229 be placed upon the floor for a second read. Clerk will read Bill 15-229. Second on that. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Adopting and enacting the Mansfield Home Value and Family Protection Act as Section 765.01 of the Mansfield Codified Ordinances as adopted to prohibit certain business activities in residential districts and thereby protect the citizens of Mansfield. Is there any discussion on Bill 15 229? Hearing none. <laughs> Mr. President, can I make a motion to bring this forward for final passage tonight? If so be, I make that motion. Okay, the motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded that we proceed to vote on Bill 15 229, waiving further reading. Um, council will cast on, I'm sorry, count. Council will vote on the motion electronically. Motion passes five to three. Okay. Motion has been made and passed to proceed. Now, is there any other further discussion? So it, now it's up for a vote. <clears throat> Do it. <laughs> um, is there any further discussion on 15 229 since it's now been brought up for a final vote? Okay. Mr. Wright. I just was wanting to question to the law director. I mean, we've been brought up that we should have more of a comprehensive bill here. And, uh, why should we pass this, this watered-down version tonight? Is there some intimate danger that we should be aware of that could happen within, say, the next two weeks, next four weeks? 
that we couldn't wait for a more comprehensive bill to uh, cover our roof. Well, my response to that is that the uh, that no one in the city presently has any protection, and it doesn't make sense not to provide immediate protection for all those that are in the uh, solely the residential areas. As have I indicated, the development and the research and the analysis and the drafting of these other zoned areas is more complex. It has to be done more carefully because uh, it's a mixed, uh, th those are mixed zones of business and uh, residential. Uh, secondly, uh, again, it's very clear that if there's any damage to any homes in our community, there is no insurance that covers for any contamination of our, our of properties. There is no insurance available to pay for any uh, seismic events. Uh, I can only say that uh, when you have a fire on three sides, you try to fight that fire with on one side with everything you have, and then you keep fighting later. But unless it's done with quality and done with a degree of caution, legislation becomes more vulnerable. We have an expression in the law that basically when you rush to do things, uh, you can make mistakes. This piece of legislation, in my opinion, is pristine, clear legislation. And I believe strongly it would pass the muster of the Ohio Supreme Court. Uh, I uh, share with you uh, your concern for these other zoned areas, but I can assure you I'm going to move, move full speed ahead with those other areas and to protect them equally in the same manner that you do. But let's protect someone now and then we'll continue to try to protect all the other citizens uh, in our city. So uh, we have no insurance protection. I, I passed out uh, this, uh, this uh, recent article in terms of that the threat of seismic events is so, so uh, serious that out in Oklahoma, where we have the largest oil storage uh, area in the country, it's there uh, to uh, preserve uh, our oil in the case of national emergency. And now the federal government is so concerned that they're saying that the risk of seismic events is a greater threat to that national security oil reserve than terrorism. So I would just plead with you, I can assure you, I give you my word, uh, Mr. Rock, that we would proceed with uh, trying to protect all the other neighborhoods as quickly as possible. But uh, I'm asking council to work as a team and to demonstrate that uh, None of us are perfect, but boy, when it comes to uh, protecting our citizens, we're all on the same team. And let's protect as many of them as we can and to do it right away. Any other questions, discussion? Comment. I, I would just echo what, what the uh, law director just stated. At any time, council can represent and do something to benefit their citizens. I don't know why we would hesitate. But if we all have one vote, so vote your conscience and let's get it, let's move forward. Thank you. Mr. Hill? Well, it just seems all the time we've got this big fear that we've never had before, and now it's election night, and we have to pass this bill tonight instead of having three readings like you normally have unless it's really an emergency. And uh, it just hasn't come across as that type of a piece of legislation. May I respond to that? Uh, Briefly. Uh, the polls close at 7.30. The election is over. Politics has nothing to do with this. And I think that, I think that the, the risk that we've been talking about has existed uh, for a long period of time. However, in the last uh, year, it's only been in 2015 that the federal government for the first time came out and conclusively established that injection wells, not fracking wells, but injection wells indisputably cause seismic events. We didn't know that until the federal government, what we suspected has now been established indisputably by the federal government and the National Geological Society. This bill has nothing to do with politics. It's, it has everything to do with providing immediate protection. I respect you and I really appreciate the work you're doing on this and to protect the citizens of the community. What was just kind of irritating 10 days to me though, to get a political piece of literature from you stating that this is legislation that needed to be passed quickly. And it was just a political 
No, that wasn't political. What was political was Mr. Rainey uh, sending that, me a that, that, email that, saying that, that's, that's, I call for the vote. Huh? It's it's up for final vote. Yeah. Council will cast their vote for final passage of Bill 15 229. Bill passes five to three.